Hey, benvenuto amico, and apologies to any Italian speakers out there. This is a game called The Commission, OC, Organized Crime, and uh, it's basically OG Grant's strategy. It's by 302 and uh, 230 AM Studios, if I'm getting that right. It just came out yesterday, and the devs were kind enough to share a key with me. I streamed this for an hour and a half or so last night. And let me tell you, it's a game that doesn't hold your hand, but let's take a look at it because I think it's a pretty interesting game. You really got to, you know, sort of just try stuff out and see what works because the uh, the clues the game gives you aren't, uh, aren't all that great. So we're starting with a family. We're picking one of the crime families here in, uh, I forget what the name of it is, Newport Beach or something like that. We get the Bogiana family here, we got the Kalesi family, the Donano family, the Junio family, and the Roca family. And they all have different things that are going on. They have a Don who's in charge, and he's got a signature trait. In this case, uh, what's this guy's name? New Shore is the name of the town. I don't know what the guy's name is, uh, oddly enough. But anyway, his trait is Earner, and he increases profit by 5% for each racket perk unlocked. And you'll find out about that a little bit later on. The Kalesi family is, uh, he's got respected, and when the commission, which is all the families, get together to meet and vote, uh, he has a 50% chance to earn an extra vote, which can be really useful, because the commission votes uh, sort of set laws that you got to follow, like no singing, you can't uh, rat people out, uh, extra profit, or, you know, uh, there's a lot of different things that you can get. The Donano family is, uh, this guy's got a trait of covert, which increases influence from bribes, which can be very handy as well. Uh, the Junio family is a bunch of recent immigrants, I guess. They specialize in low-end rackets that don't take a lot of uh, time or investment. Enforcer, increased profit by 3% for each neighborhood with any occupation. And we got the Roca family here, who are in pink. Uh, dangerous family, no problem with high-risk rackets and killing those who get in their way. You got the vengeful trait. He earns an interrogation after enemy assassination attempts and keeps one interrogation after own assassination attempts. So, um, you fight amongst the families, as you might imagine. And uh, the way to find out information about the family is through interrogations. Uh, this sort of, this plays a lot like a board game, I guess. Um, and, and I haven't actually touched a lot of this stuff, so I'm going to take the Junio family because that's who I took last time. And uh, low end rackets is kind of a kind of a useful thing. So let's let's try it out. Now this is just going to take a ton of experimentation. I am going to take easy fair match with four AI opponents. You also have a tougher match where AI gets a head start, and hard where the AI gets a huge head start. I'm going to take easy because we're just trying to take a look at this. And let me tell you, it's not an easy game. Uh, it's not an easy game because there's no tutorial. We can move around with the uh, holding down the right mouse button and panning around. We've got these different areas in New Shore. We've got West Cushman, Fordham, Dryer Square, Rochester, and East Cushman. And if we look over here at this little window, this is our main sort of action window that's going on. We've got our family tree, shows our family, and we can look at the other families, but notice that we can't see anything about them. We know the name of the capo de regime, or whatever his name is, the Don, I guess. I guess these guys are the capo de regime. And then they've got some dudes under them named Soldado, uh, like soldiers or something. So they're like their henchmen, and those henchmen have uh, dudes under them, and that's here, these associate guys. And you can promote these dudes around, they'll get arrested, all kinds of stuff. Your power level here controls how many of these uh, Soldado and Kappa regimes can get promoted. So, uh, yeah, let's go back to our family. You can click on these guys and you can see their traits, you can see their loyalty score, uh, how many associates they have, and then there's this recruitment value. You can't do much, I don't think, to directly affect this recruitment, but I think it's a poor, it's, it's kind of a portion to you based on what rackets you're running in a particular territory. So let's look at rackets. These are overall rackets. Uh, a look at what's going on in your kingdom uh, in general. And you can also see your traits over here. So you can get a special racket trait you can invest in and buy these. I kind of wish there were commas in those numbers because it's a little hard to see. We've so got all these different things from uh, mugging all the way up to really high end stuff like running casinos and things. And then we've got our territories over here. Each of these is divided up by the overall territory, and then within them there is a separate character, uh, I'm sorry, a separate uh, mini territory, whatever you want to call it, neighborhood. And um, 
investment is how much you've got going in there, how much money you put into running your various rackets, and occupation is how much muscle you've got on hand. And there's a lot of things, so if you don't have any muscle, you're going to lose your investment. And this takes place on a turn-by-turn -turn basis, right? So you got to drop your copper regime dude into a neighborhood, and then you got to deploy your soldado or whatever these guys are into other territories. They can bring muscle with them, and so therefore you basically can hold ground and earn profit from your rackets that are going on. Over here we've got an overall finance screen, which isn't what you'd think it would be. It's basically the cut that you're giving to your uh, to your couple regimes. And then we've got legal. If we had somebody in jail, they would appear here. We've got politics. Um, I think this is their our amount of influence with them, 20, I guess, to 100. And we can bribe people to increase our influence. The effectiveness of this will be changed by various policies that are set and various uh, characteristics that our guys have. This is the commission here. A look at all of the families, the Don of Leffel City, Don of Hayes City. So these are all the cats that get together and decide what's going on. We don't have a policy and we don't have a rule right now. In 24 turns, these guys are gonna vote and the voting is gonna be based on our influence. So if we're very influential, then we're going to get to influence that vote considerably. And then over here we have a report. Now one thing that doesn't happen in this, like a lot of grand strategy games, is we don't have sort of a rolling uh, a scroll of events that have happened. You got to kind of watch down here, a little number will pop up on the number of events that have happened and you're going to want to turn to your report and see. A lot of times a dude will get arrested and you'll lose a whole neighborhood without even really realizing it. Up here, what do we have? Save load, and, oh, glossary, yeah. So there's no tutorial, but you can go through the glossary and read up on all this stuff. Now I'm going to warn you, I haven't read all of this. I did read a bit of it on stream last night. So a lot of these things are still a little confusing to me. So what we're going to do is uh, let's click on a neighborhood here. Let's pick uh, let's pick West Cush. You know what? Let's try East Cushman. So this is a territory view. We can see uh, the assignment. There's nobody assigned over here, and our weekly profits and lifetime profits. And then we can see the description. A borough with a little of everything. People commute, blah, blah, blah. Picture middle class where a working man can earn his keep and indulge in scattered underground speakeasies. Uh, let's take a look at West Cushman. Blue collar workforce. So this is kind of a poor neighborhood. Uh, let's go ahead and try assigning one of our guys over here. So we click on the assign button and we have uh, this guy here who has enforcer and Norse profit penalty for neighborhoods that are over capacity. Okay, if a neighborhood gets too many dudes in it, uh, like you've got three competing families in here, uh, normally everybody would suffer from a profit loss, but in this case, this guy doesn't uh, get a profit penalty. And he's also a brawler, which increases the muscle of subordinates by two. Now that can be very handy. So let, let's just assign him here. He's not here yet. But he will eventually go there, and I think if we click on him, will it tell us what he's doing? Preparing to move to West Cushman. There we go. So it shows us what he's doing. Um, there's a lot of stuff. I don't know how to manipulate their individual loyalty. I guess you could give them a bigger cut, but I don't, I don't really know. So we'll just have to see. And then we could go to Dryer Square and assign our other dude. You're going to want to learn these guys' names, too, because um, you can just sort of mistakenly... It doesn't just give you the guy that doesn't have anything to do. It gives you the list, and you might pick the same guy. Although this dude looks the same here. Uh, let's assign Piers Junio over here. See, so notice it would let me reassign Tom there. So I might end up with nobody assigned. He also apparently has the same traits. I don't know if that's right. Maybe the interface isn't updating. You can see that there's a moving signal there. Let's just click on him and make sure. He's going to move to Dryer Square. He's going to move to West Cushman. We can't move this around. If I click on this guy, unfortunately, yeah, okay, we can't see. If I click on this guy, you can see the little arrows there. A lot of the UI stuff I think could, I feel like could be improved. Uh, I'm sure, I don't know if this game is early access or if, uh, I think it may be. So they're still going to be developing some of this stuff. I'd like a little more clearer indication of what's going to happen next turn. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, so anyway, we could end the turn. I don't think there's anything else we could really do. I mean, we could bribe somebody or something. But we really can't do any, like, investment. Like, if we click on Cut in Place over here in Dryer Square, 
Oh, we could assign. Can we actually assign anybody? No. No soldados are available for this assignment. It must be a Kappa regime in the corresponding borough first. So we've got to take our first turn in order to get our Kappa regimes into West Cushman and Dryer Square before we can actually start doing anything. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm not going to make this video terribly long, and it's not going to be an ongoing series because I've still got a lot to learn about this game before I could ever play it in any kind of meaningful way. I want to play a few games of it and see if I can get the hang of it. But anyway, if we click here now, we'll see that our guy is over here. Here's Tom Junio. And then we also have some other families here. So we've got a guy from the Bogiana, we've got a Kalesi, and uh, we've got a guy from Roca over here. If we click on Dryer Square, you can see that Piers is over here, and we've also got Mario Bogiana over here. So we can do some stuff now, though. If we go into here, uh, not here, we have to go into the actual territory. So, again, remember where you are. We're in Dryer Square. We're in West Cushman. Let's take a look at a, uh, well, let's find a crappy, like, little neighborhood over here. You click on a neighborhood, um, you can see it's heat. Heat is how likely you are to draw attention. If uh, heat gets too high, you can suspend your rackets. If uh, things start going south, some, some rackets lose their profitability over time. If that starts happening, you can sell it uh, at kind of like half price to get just pull out of the community. Um, so you can see the neighborhood. If you've got other guys that are setting up in your neighborhood, you can fight them and potentially beat them. That's a muscle versus muscle kind of uh, roll of the dice. And then we can also see this a poor neighborhood. And so can benefit, certain rackets can benefit uh, generating extra profit, but they don't tell you up front explicitly from what I can tell um, which rackets those are going to be. Rackets have traits, but I don't see anywhere that they're fully explained, so you'll have to figure those out as you play the game. This is also a medium-sized neighborhood. So for instance, protection rackets do better in small neighborhoods than in large neighborhoods, something I figured out. Um, I think protection rackets do better in poor neighborhoods than in larger neighborhoods. But you'll figure all that out as you go along. Also, uh, you'll also see more traits come over here as you learn more about the, the borough. So if you were to uh, open up a speakeasy, let's say, you might on the next turn see a thing over here that says no alcohol. And that will like give you a 50% penalty on any alcohol-related businesses in that neighborhood. So you kind of learn that as you go along. There may be a way to know it up front, but I don't know what that is. So anyway, here's our assignment. So we can now put a soldado group into this neighborhood. If we click on that, we can see that we have Giacomo Ferrara and Lester DeMayo over here. DeMayo, I don't know. Um, well, let's see what this guy's got. He's got an earner. Uh, he increases muscle by five with at least 25,000 in friendly investments in the neighborhood. And he's also a risk taker. Profit from gambling rackets increases by 20%, but heat increases by one. Uh, what's Lester got? He's respected, can bring an additional five associates to a neighborhood, and he's frugal. Increased profit from financial rackets by 20%. Let's go with this. Let's go with uh, Lester. And then we've got to assign him some muscle. Theory behind assigning this, I don't even know. Um, you got um, an amount of muscle, I think, that the Kappa regime has, and so you can kind of slide those around. I I'm just going to put in five for now because I really don't know what the optimal is on this. So let's click that. And now we got guys that are coming here, but we don't yet have anything. If we go in here to rackets, we can see all of the potential rackets, which describe everything that's available to us. But we can't actually do anything, at least I don't think so. So this guy's got a bonus to finances. If we pick numbers game, we need at least one muscle in the neighborhood to maintain investment. So we gotta wait for uh, whatever his name is to move in over here. So let's last a row, and we've got another soldado that we can put into a place. Let's just take out, let's check out cut in place here. It's rich and small. Uh, I'm gonna find another poor one. Laster Row is poor and medium, average and large in Rodham Hill, which actually can be a good thing. Um, this guy gets more, let's see what this guy gets. I forget what our new, our other dude gets. So we already assigned Lester DeMayo to another thing over here. This guy gets 25,000 in investments, he gets a bonus, and he gets a bonus from gambling rackets. I think gambling would do all right here. I don't know that for sure. I'm only gonna put five in here, let's leave that be as it is. 
So, muscle is not directly tied to associates. Uh, your soldado or your capo regime might get some sort of bonus to muscle in a neighborhood. So try to keep that in mind, and I don't know the, the, the way it works, but it does work. So you can kind of just, I guess, play with it and figure it out. I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's a way, and I'm sure somebody's going to do a, uh, you know, a wiki on this thing. But anyway, we got another poor small neighborhood over here. Let's see who we've got to be able to put in. We got uh, Robert Altieri over here, who gets more muscle if he has twenty-five thousand in uh, the neighborhood. He gets a profit from entertainment rackets, uh, but the heat increases. So I don't know about him. Uh, I guess like a speakeasy or a casino might do well. This guy, Giacomo Polizzi, he's got a um, increase by muscle by one for every three interrogations against enemy families, and he's a showman. He also gets an entertainment increase. These guys might do better in a higher end neighborhood, actually, but I don't really want to move my guy right now, so let's just go ahead and we'll sign Giacomo over here and we'll give him five. Again, don't know about that arrangement there. So that's the Soul Isle. Let's see if we can find a richer area or an average area. Industrial Basin, let's see what's up with that. Uh, primary source of work in West Cushman area contain multiple docks, factories, and industrial warehouses. Uh, I was kind of, is there a place where we could maybe many members of the Roca family and such more aggressive rackets are considered off limits? Uh, yeah, well, all right, fine. Let's move in here. Let's move in here. We'll be going against another family, but that's all right. Now, Altieri, who did I assign at that other place? <laughs> See, problem is, I don't even know who I assigned. Is it Tellus here? Pending assignment to Desol Isle will be canceled. Yeah, so let's put Robert in here. Little Bobby Altieri is going to go over here. And uh, now we've got our, our Soldado moving in. We still can't make any investments yet. So let's do next turn. And uh, let's just check this. Yeah, there's no, no events to report over here, so that's fine. Let's go look at our territories. And now we'll be able to see occupation. So we've got a guy in Desol Isle. Here's our muscle versus uh, some other dude. Sometimes these do rollovers, sometimes they don't. I think maybe it's not quite working. And then down here, we can see that we have six muscle for the Junio family in uh, Rensenhurst. Let's move back up here to Laster Row, though. So in Laster Row, you can now see that we have Lester DeMaio and five associates, totaling six muscle. If we did something to trigger Lester's muscle bonus, um, I think it's 25,000 in investment, then we would uh, then we would see that reflected here in our muscle. I think it would say Lester to Mayo five associates and let's say twelve muscle. All right, so now we can purchase a racket. We got fifty thousand dollars over here to purchase a racket, and I think what we're going to go for. Let's just go for good old. Um, let's go for just a good old protection racket. We invest eight grand. We get up to two grand every uh, every cycle I think although that can very much uh, change as we go along let's go to Rodham Hill and that's an average and large so protections not gonna work very well there I think but numbers might work let's throw numbers in known as the Italian lottery let the people bet with the odds in your favor fifteen thousand dollars we had to invest in that and then let's go down and just invest in a couple things. Again, I'm not telling you I'm making optimized moves over here. I'm definitely not. So just keep that in mind. Let's do support and small. Let's just do protection racket over here. And then in, uh, in Rensenhurst. This is a rich and large area. Some kind of gambling might not be a bad idea. Can we get gambling or loan sharking maybe? Let's get loan sharking. Uh, we invest 16,000, uh, base profit is 8,000. Profits are poor at first, but improve over time. There are other rackets like I think insurance where your profits decrease over time. So those are the kinds of things you may want to roll in and out, like put one in, wait for it to start decreasing profit and then roll it back out and put something else in. You lose some investment money, but you keep your profit high is the, the way to go with it. All right, so we got investments in all four of our little territories we've got set up, all of our neighborhoods. So let's do a next turn. Let's just check in on the family tree over here. Can we see anything? I think, uh, yeah, we can see that we're using 10 of our associates. So we could put 10 more associates in under each of these COPPA regimes. We've got 10 dudes just sitting idle. So again, I'm not making optimal moves over here. You need to uh, need to take a look at this yourself and figure out how it works. I think we could put five more under each of the soldados if we wanted to. Uh, 
what we can't do is move one of these cats out of a neighborhood and have the operation continue to go. There may be a way to do it, but I wasn't able to figure it out. I think you've got to be able to do that to expand, or maybe you just need more soldata to hold more territory. Let's just take next turn. I don't think we got any items over here. But now if we look at our territories, we should see our investments. Yeah, at Rensenhurst, we can see that we have 16,000 invested for our family. And over here, it seems like it doesn't do a rollover if you have multiples, unfortunately. Maybe that will change. Uh, over here, we've got our 8,000 and our 15,000. And you can see that we've made a profit. Uh, we've made a weekly profit of $920 and 2665 $2,655 there. And down here, we made 928 bucks in DeSole Isle and $350 in Rinse and Hearse. And so that is basically the way it goes. We could, um, you know, we can continue doing this sort of thing. If we go look at uh, the West Cushman neighborhood, we can see all the dudes that are there. I think those are the same ones that were there before. Let's click on, let's click on DeSole Isle and take a look. So uh, we've got equal muscle with our guys he has zero associates but somehow has six muscles so i don't know what that guy's got going on we could fight him by clicking here right now we're maintaining peace but we could fight him we don't have a muscle advantage so i don't think we'll do that you can see that we've got an eight thousand investment and there's a total investment of twenty four thousand and each uh neighborhood does have a maximum investment over here there's also heat so our heat is increased by 10 over here. I don't think we did that. I think whatever this cat is doing did that. And I guess that would mean that he invested 16 grand. So we ought to be able to figure out what he did. I'm guessing he did loan sharking over here. Uh, Cause that's the 16 grand item. Oh, that's also hijacking, which could probably generate a lot of heat. Yeah, it generates lots of heat. I bet he's doing hijacking. So you got to be a little bit of an intelligence analyst over here to try to figure out what's going on. Um, I think I don't know how to do this interrogation thing yet, but uh, that's obviously part of it. And notice that we still don't know anything about any of these cats, right? So they're all they're all just blanks. So this is definitely a part of the game, and I haven't invested investigated it yet. If you click on an ongoing racket, we can see how it's performing, and if you roll over the top here. You can see what your bonuses are. So we have a 0.8 muscle multiplier here. So if we put more muscle into this territory, we should be able to increase that a little bit. Right now we're getting 85% for after the capital regime cut. And you can see our profits uh, weekly, what heat was being generated. So we generated half the heat here, I guess. And uh, investment amount, racket age is seven days. Some things change as they age. We can invest some additional money into it, and it will scale the profit. And also the recruiting, uh, which again is an important component later on. Uh, yeah, when the commission votes, your ranking is uh, determined by your profitability, your amount of recruiting, and I think interrogations is the other main stat there. So how much you're finding out about other people. We could also sell this racket for four thousand, which is half of what we invested in it and we could suspend it if we wanted to cut off heat. I think heat raises as you go along. I think 100 might be the max here, uh, and somebody's getting arrested at that point, but I think it can happen anytime around there. On stream, I was suspending at about 60%, or about 60 heat, but obviously that could change um, beyond your control with other families involved in the action in that neighborhood. So again, very complex little game. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to exploring it more. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do any more on it right now though, because we're already at 23 minutes. I don't want to make this a super long video. But um, it takes a while to get to week. Uh, what is this? Yeah, 21 turns still until this goes on. So there's a lot that's gonna happen before these guys vote. You may even increase in power. Um, we may we may rank up Jacopo Junio over here. You can see that his power is a one right now. When he's promoted to two, uh, we will get, I think, another Capo Regime, or maybe the next level is another Soldado, and level three will get three Capo Regimes. I think that might be the way it goes. And then we have this little bar down here which shows that power. So anyway, that is the Commission OC, and I strongly suggest at least giving it a try if you like strategy games. Now, again, uh, it's fairly tough for me, but I'm not super great at strategy games. So, you know, I don't know. If you guys really dig this thing, you might just totally get into it. I've seen some people 
that are you know earning fantastic profit and stuff go check out their discord you can check out the link to the company in my description and also have a link to the steam um, store page so you can purchase it over there thanks very much for joining me and uh ciao bella see ya